Micah chapter 5. Now gather thyself in troops. Military occupation. O daughter of troops, he has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. I gotta take this all one part. Because this one verse doesn't tell us nothing. For thou Bethlehem Ephrathah. There are two Bethlehems. Though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet shall out of yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to rule in Israel, whose going forth has been from the old and from everlasting. Okay, so now we're going to go scripture with scripture. We don't mess with the words. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew's written to the Jews. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? That's quite interesting because that's going to be <coughs> the title that Pilate puts over the head of Jesus on the cross. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him, not Mary, when Herod the king had heard these things, uh oh, the king hears there's a king coming. He was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Now, why was Jerusalem troubled? Think about that. We're talking about the Messiah, the Messiah has come. And Jerusalem is troubled. All of Jerusalem, not just the Romans, not just the Gentiles. And we had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, the Jews. He demanded of them where Christ should be born. So even Herod knew that there was a anointed one, there was the Messiah coming, and here he is. So what is the big gas during the life of ministry? Well, we don't know who he is. We have no idea who he is. The king of Rome, the Herod, says, it's Christ. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written by the prophet. Gee, I'm only prophet we're going to look at. And Bethlehem, the land of Judah, art not thou least of the nations of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor. Well, Micah said ruler. Well, scripture was scripture. What does a ruler mean? It means governor. In many, many cases, scripture with scripture, the Bible is its own dictionary. And that shall rule my people Israel. That's exactly what Micah said. Back to Micah. So, verse 1, And gather thyself the troops, O daughter of the troops. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel, Jesus Christ, with a rod upon his cheek. That's the final hours of Jesus. So evidently, from the kangaroo court of the Pharisees to the cross, not only the cat and nine tails, but there was a rod used to, to beat him on the cheeks 
where they would pull his beard. But thou, Bethlehem and Ephrathah, thou be little among the thousands of Judah. It's a very tiny, small city compared to the other city. Yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, God, that's the ruler of Israel, Jesus, whose going forth had been from the old prophecy from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up. Jesus is going to give them up. Until the time that she which travails has brought forth. Now what if I've always told you about that travailing, that woman given birth? That's the tribulation period. The time of Jacob's trouble where God, all right, he gives him Moses and Elijah, he gives him 144,000, but during the church age, as a corporate body of the nation, God said, like, hey, put them on the shelf. They crucified their Messiah. They tried to kill Paul, a messenger of God. Individually, they can be saved. Individually, they can be dealt with as a corporate body. Guys, right, I'll, I'll let the, I'll let those those dumb dogs into heaven. I mean, we are the stepping stone. I believe is all it says. It. Or maybe Peter. We Gentiles only get saved because those Jews are stiff necked. And refuse Jesus. I mean, we we got the greatest church, we got the greatest pastor. Guys, like, no, I'm only trying to get my people mad. I'm trying to raise their jealousy because they made me jealous of all the gods they got. I mean, after all, for the Gentiles to get in outside the church period. Uh, we got to use our conscience. We're going to be judged by what our conscience tells us. The remnant, pay attention to that word always, of his brethren shall return. His brethren, he came unto his own, his own received the none. Shall return unto the children of Israel. He shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, Jesus. And in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, Jesus, Jehovah saves. And they shall abide, live, be with forever. And now shall he be great into the ends of the earth. Jesus. Well, you got Christians running around. We got a great pastor. We got a great church. What happened to the great Jesus? Oh, yeah, him. This man shall be for peace. When the Assyrian shall come. Okay, now we're going to go back to Israel. Going to go into captivity. But also the Assyrian is a type of Antichrist. That's why I'm working on a report and, and got pushed off the side a little bit. But you know, these modern Bibles, they don't say the word ass for donkey. They say donkey. Well, you don't change it to donkey-erian. There's the word ass. What do you do with that, that town in, in, in Acts, assholes? And when you read that... And when I went to school, and they're like, when you read this, it's like three or four times in the Bible. And he's like, you be very careful what you say, because you could, you could make it a very bad word if you don't do it right. What do you do with that one, assholes? A-S-S-O-S. <laughs> Donkey holes? I don't get cereal. That's a type of antichrist. And he shall tread in our palaces, Israel. It's funny because the Assyrian and the Babylonian, they're all types of any Do you realize there, there have been Assyrians, there have been Babylonians? 
who have been pleasing to God, and I believe some of the good characters, like the city of Nineveh, are going to be in heaven. You know, oh, I love, you know, the study of Revelation, the Antichrist 666. If you study what the Antichrist out through the scriptures, and the types of the Antichrist, that Antichrist type in the book of Exodus is Pharaoh. Man, that's one of the number ones. What about the Pharaoh before him helped Israel? Joseph. Jacob himself and his 12 sons. Well, aren't there a class of people that help the Jews and they will be brought into the millennium? And then, boom, there's a changeover. Then you got this mean, nasty person running around. You can't just go, oh, the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, ooh. And he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds. I have no idea. And eight principal men. Fifteen men. I don't know. Well, it's going to be Israel. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with a sword. Maybe you can go in history and look it up, but I don't know. Let's see if there's any notes here. And they don't even really have any notes. Let's see. They shall waste the land of Assyria with a sword. Now maybe you go in history and find out who, who destroyed Assyria. The land of Nimrod. You go back to Genesis chapter 10. We're, we're in the land of Babylon. The mighty hunter before God. We are in the realm of Tammuz. We say, who is Tammuz? Deck the halls with boughs of holly, hallelujah, I don't know you. So it's the birthday of Jesus, you say, but you're quite mistaken. It's Babylonian, yes it is, with the Easter Barney. You don't know who Tammuz is? You don't know who Esther are? is? You don't realize Esther has, gets pregnant with eggs, children chasing after eggs. She gets pregnant. Nine months later, she has a baby, and you celebrate that baby. Sometimes, the, the, the two holidays, the two times that people go to church, in, there are many times in our calendar that there, there's nine months. But then again, a complete pregnancy for a woman is not literal nine months. Somebody gets pregnant with her eggs. <laughs> and if you look at her, she's got a lot of eggs on her. And then nine months later, she has the baby. And the world thinks it's Jesus. Paul says, you better be careful because there's another Jesus. Satan's slick. The entrance thereof, thus shall he deliver us from the Syrian. Right, go back and, and find out who destroyed Assyria. I, 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 that's your study. Ours is the Bible. 
when he cometh into our land, when he treadeth with our borders. Now I know the Antichrist is going to be Jesus. When I get Jesus the seven principal shepherds and eight principal men. Who? I don't know. I know there are angels that go forth. I know Jesus goes forth. I know the Christians go forth after Jesus. I know there's the 144,000. Moses and Elijah has already been raptured out. That's just as much as the, the four and twenty-four elders, which I, I I had one Baptist. He knows exactly who they are. No, you don't. And I don't think they have anything to do with the church. But I don't know. They shall waste the land of Syria with a sword. And the land of Nim, the land of Nimrod. That's that whole area, Babylon, and that. The entrance thereof, they shall, thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, when he cometh into our land and he treadeth within our borders. So historically is Assyria, and Nineveh was conquered, their home city. See, Assyria invades Judah, 701 B.C. But well, Babylon takes over Judah. Um, I don't have the day here. I thought I had the day when it falls. And the red mint, pay attention to that word, because we are in the seventh year of the tribulation period. This is the type Rahab and all her family in the house behind the red scarlet thread shall be in the midst of many people as the dew from the Lord. Israel is again going to be fed in the wilderness by a, if maybe not the manna, but maybe the manna where the scriptures say, and I don't care what you say, God is going to bang the head of the dragon, Revelation 12, and from that head is going to come bread. So somehow the Antichrist unwillingly is going to feed Israel in the wilderness that he wants to kill. Isn't God great? And the do is, they're going to have to go out like the wilderness in the morning under the threat of the Antichrist, under the shadow of death to get their food. They're going to have to get it real quick. As the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man. It's going to be quick. Nor waiteth for the sons of men. I mean, when it comes time for that bread in the wilderness for the Jew... In the tribulation period, that place prepared to sell a feature wherever it is. The Bible says that when the sun came up, it waxed hot and it melted. And if you sleep in, you ain't getting nothing. The raiment of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people. Right? The Jews are going to be in the midst of the Gentiles, many people. As a lion among the beasts of the field. This is Jacob. The lion. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. The flocks of sheep is usually Israel. The lion is usually the devil. And the raiment of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. So here's the Jews in the Gentiles. 
in the midst of many people, all right, the people as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of the sheep. Well, the subject is there's not many lions, but there's a lot of sheep. And when Jesus comes, he divides two classes of people. The sheep from the goats. The sheep has been helping the Jew. And there's a particular phrase that you don't find in New Jerusalem. I have to say that. Where the lion lays down with the lamb. In the millennium. Well, if it's, if it, and I could be wrong, okay, I could be wrong. Micah 5 eight is that, if that sheep is the Gentiles and the lion is Israel, those that help the Jew are going to be in the millennium with, with all the benefits of the Jews. Who, if he go through, <laughs> Both tread it down and tear the pieces, and none can deliver. All right, the lion has become the destroyer. The raiment of Jacob, the Jews, shall be among the Gentiles, a group of Gentiles, non Jews, in the midst of many people, as a lion in the beasts of the forest. Is that line a reference to Jacob or to many people? And they're going to go through, they're going to tread down, they're going to tear in pieces, and none's going to deliver. That's the Antichrist. Which would go with our adversary, the, the devils, like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So then that lion doesn't take on Israel, Jacob takes on the many people in in the book of Exodus you have Israel in Egypt serving the Egyptians are over Israel but that Pharaoh is not Egyptian he's a high coast He's a foreign ruler. And I forget right now what nation he came from, but you can look it up. So here is Raymond of Jacob, Jews. Here are Gentiles, okay? Then here's another class of people. And can we maybe take the iron toes that don't mix with the miry clay of Daniel's image. <laughs> but when the sons and men came unto the daughters, and they're not the children of, uh, of whoever, <laughs> you say, what is Micah 5 a? Uh, to me, there's a lot of possibilities. The hand shall be lifted up upon thy adversary. That would be the Gentiles. That would be the Antichrist. And all thy enemies shall be cut off. That would be the Gentiles by Jesus. The goat nation. And it shall come to pass in that day. Okay. saith the Lord, that I will, God will, cut off thy horses in the midst of thee. All thine enemies means the Jewish enemy. 
And it shall come to pass in that day, he says, I will cut off thy, the Jewish horses, out of the midst of thee, I will destroy thy chariots. But the subject of verse 9 is the enemy. I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strange um, strongholds, excuse me, castles, rock towers. I will cut off the witchcraft out of thy hand. This is the works of Israel. This is the works of Judah from Jeremiah. Friend, this is the works of the church. Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter. These, um, I, I don't know what these, I forget. I, when I was working at, a, at, at that place, they had these cards and they got wizards and dragons and doodads. I've seen them in the church I was just in. I've seen the grandchildren of the music director who's got ungodly music, I've seen their grandchildren having these cards. And it involves witchcraft, it involves dragon, it involves magic. This card has more magic and out does that card however it goes. I've watched them play these games. And it's either power, it's magic, or this guy's more healthier than that guy. I've seen a pastor's daughter in the church Get all happy over the Pokemon. Look at me. And she goes, look at me. I got all gold Pokemons and all that. I don't fully understand. I don't know if Pokemon has witches and all that. I don't care. A Christian has no business in that. People are getting car accidents looking for Pokemon. They're more interested in trying to find this crap out there instead of trying to find Jesus. Jesus is going to come. Wait a minute, I found this Pokemon. Hold on. And you do whatever you have to do. And there shall be no more soothsayers. You know. we got to find Uncle Joe because we got to find out where he put the will. What horse am I to bet on? Should I go to work this week or should I not? Should I take this job or should I not take this job? Tell me what my tea leaves. Tell me what my, my, my horoscope. Why do they call it a horoscope? Okay. This is stuff that's going on in Israel. Graven images. Also will I cut off. That cut off is a word used in the law that... If that was a Jew, you went straight to hell, you didn't pass go, and you didn't collect 200. You were done, you were finished. And thy standing images out of the mystery. What's the standing Im images? You remember when, um, I can't think of her name now. David's wife there, Saul's daughter. Remember, Saul's out to kill David. And David's on the run. And David's wife protects Michael. 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 Protects David. She gets a sta standing image, puts it in David's bed, and puts some hair on it. Bolster. That's what it is. It looks like, and when they came to the bed, oh, it looks like David is asleep. Maybe she had the original David statue. That's a standing person or eagle. Out of the mystery, thou shalt not no more worship the works of thy hands. Made in America, made in Japan, made in China, made in Hong Kong.
I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. This looks like Israel. Because according to Jeremiah, Judah has all this stuff. So will I destroy thy cities. And we're, and we're back in Israel. God's saying, listen, I'm going to destroy The Syrians come in, he's going to destroy it all because of this. Jeremiah told him that, <coughs> excuse me, the Babylonians are coming and destroy, and they do destroy Jerusalem and Judah because of all these sins. But I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. Now, if it is the Jews, and it's the Syrian and the Babylonian army, what do you do with verse 15? I'm going to curse them that curse you. If you are a Gentile, and you are having these sins, God's going to kick your butt. Babylon is a city that is no more. Nineveh is ruined. The Colosseum, the Ephesus, and all that, they're all ruined. They don't even know what Stonehenge was. Well, they can have their guesses and everything, but they don't know. Easter Island, they have no idea what all that stuff is. Why? Because they didn't worship God Jehovah and God kicked their butt. And if God, let's put it this way, if God did it to Israel and he did. And if God did it to Judah and he did. And God did it to Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbors, neighboring cities and he done. If he did it to Babylon, he did. If he did it to Germany, Without off Hitler and the Nazis, he did. We did it to the Aztecs, he did. We did it to Easter Island, he did. Babylon. Alexandria is ruined. There are cities still in Israel today. They're, they're ruins. They're, they're tells. They're all broken up cities. Tyre is, a, is, is the area is gone. Sardis, Ephesus, Rome. Their cities, they're gone. And we sit here as a nation. We sin. And we don't know what we're going to do with, with the unborn baby. We don't care what the Supreme Court said anymore. They're, they're, the Congress, the nation leaders today, the GOP, and I don't know what you call Democrats, are trying to legislate legalization where you still can get an abortion. You didn't win nothing. It comes down, some states can, some states you can't. You still legalize and tax alcohol that destroys family. It's a waste on a man's budget. There are mothers and children suffering because you allow alcohol to be sold. They know beyond a shadow of a doubt that smoking tobacco is a great medical waste of the lung and disease. And there's long lists like COPD. And yet they still allow the sale the selling of tobacco. And they have the power as the government to say 
no more. We will become a dry nation to alcohol and tobacco. Utah and there are states or there are areas where they're dry. You can't have alcohol. It's illegal. We can do that in this country. We had it time before. No the prohibition. They, you know, NASCAR, you know, they ran a, and and you know the mafia people killed. The only ones that got killed were those that were involved in the liquor trade. The moonshiners and all that. You didn't need to legalize it. But, you know, there's a church, there's a couple churches out there who use intoxicating liquor as their blood to sacrifice. What I'm saying is, as America, we got these sins. We promote adultery in our unholy land. Our movies, our television. We wonder why... Our children are going out killing everybody because we got video games, we got movies, we got television programs, all about death and people that die. And the games and the movies get to a point that it's like pornography. It just gets to a point, you know, it's, it's just on the screen. Let me go get it for real. And they say that about pornography. These sexual perverts are because, you know what, the computer screen, the magazines, the television, it's not real enough anymore. In our prisons, we house people, according to God, that ought to be dead. Capital punishment. We allow the Constitution, the Constitution... For people who don't know God, who don't know the Bible, who enjoy sin, we give them the right to speak, the freedom to speak. And you think God's going to keep us going. You think God's going to keep blessing us. Friend, you're seriously, seriously mistaken. You've got churches when you pass by any church, pray for them. Their doctrines are all messed up. Their Bible is wrong. You tell them about paganism. I'm talking about the Baptist church. You got the, the, the Catholic daily bread in the Baptist church. I call it Catholic Baptist. You can't say anything against the Protestant. You can't say anything about the Catholic. No. In other words, you can't speak the truth in a Baptist church. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. Well, we, our church, we're going to vote on... That's not in the Bible. We got a messed up nation under God, of course. Well, how many religions and how many gods are in America? What takes people to go to church today? And what will keep them out of church? You got a midweek service. What's the television program that they won't be there? Why are they not going to be in there that, that Sunday night? Or that Sunday morning? Here's a question I can ask. Sunday night, where's your pastor going to be? I can show you some great pictures. Pat. Our view, Sunday night, our view of a lake. How come it's not a picture of people sitting up you? Sunday night. I've seen it, and that's all I would ever see. A pastor that walks up to the, pul the pulpit, podium, whatever you want to call it, and he don't have a Bible. I 
and outright tell the people, I, I haven't prayed it should this. My prayer list has been put off to the side. I guess that RV was too busy. I guess those meetings you have with other pastors. I know a pastor. He goes all over these meetings all over Florida and, and, and Mississippi and all that. For these, 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 I thought you were an independent Baptist church. What are you doing meeting with other That's not what an independent Baptist is. You are, no one else is going to tell you what to do. All right, you may have one or two or three pastor fellowships, whatever you want to call it. Every week, every other week. Why don't they tell you when you tell, listen, but you're spending too much money. You've got your head in the, the ends of the power of the earth, Proverbs. Yes, i got a pastor in mind. I was at a church, and well, I can't come to church Wednesday night. Why? What's, what's going on? Uh, an American idol. We're going to find the, the, the American. What? That, that does not ring a dumbbell in your life. American idol. I'm not going to church. And I've seen your fam your, the children in your family, and they're surrounded by Harry Potter. What's the Bible say? And these churches and these Christians expect revival. You preach on the street like, like the apostles and Jesus did. Jesus did not have a church. He walked up to a, a podium and started speaking to people. In the early church life, with the apostles going on and the disciples going out, there, they didn't meet in church building. They met in house. There, there are preachers and pastors and church. Uh, house church, huh? That's what it was in the back of the book of Acts. That's where it was in these great revivals. In New England. Art right. Sunday, Moody, you expect God to bless you and your wonderful great church house. Revelation 3 says in the Laodicean church age, it's the devil that's inside the church house and Jesus is standing outside the door 